Let's get to it. This is a budget laptop choice for gamers. The Lenovo Log 15 and more precisely its variant with the Intel i5 12450H and RTX 3050 on board is currently one of the most affordable options for laptop gamers as much as I don't like recommending laptops for any serious gaming if you don't need that extra portable factor which a gaming PC obviously doesn't have. You can check its current price using one of the links below, but as I don't want to waste your time, it's about $1000 at the time of making this video, which will obviously vary depending on the configuration you'll decide to choose. So what do you get for this price? Well, quite a lot actually. We'll dive deep, so buckle up and feel free to use the timestamps in the pinned comment below to get to different sections of this review. There are quite a few variants of the Lenovo Log 15 available out there, differing mostly when it comes to the CPUs and GPUs that they use. Today we're going to take a closer look at the Lenovo Log 15 IRH8 in the variant with the 8-core 12-thread Intel i5 12450H CPU, 16GB of 5200MHz DDR5 RAM and the NVIDIA RTX 3050 with 6GB of VRAM on board. This may seem dated by today's standards for some, but as you will see in a while, it's quite capable when it comes to real-world use case scenarios, such as gaming. Remember that this laptop also comes in other hardware configurations, for instance with the RTX 4060 on board, or with AMD CPUs. You can see the other variants of the Lenovo Log 15 both on screen and in the description below. In ideal cooling conditions, the Intel i5 12450H can reach up to 4.4 GHz single core and up to 3.8 GHz on all cores simultaneously. Stay tuned for the quick benchmark test which will tell us quite a lot about the thermal performance of this model. A little spoiler, it does get pretty hot. What do you get inside the box? Aside from the laptop, you can find a short user manual and a warranty booklet, and a 170 watts power supply or a 230 watts power supply if you went with the model with an RTX 4060 on board. That's it. First, let's take a look at the overall build quality, which for me is always quite important when it comes to devices you're generally supposed to be able to easily transport and carry around. The laptop weighs about 5.3 pounds or 2.4 kilograms, so it's not really a lightweight device. It's mostly plastic, however it doesn't feel cheap, and it passes most of my bent tests without any unwanted creaking or other worrying signs of cost cutting. Right off the bat you can see that this is one of the designs where the laptop has most of its ports positioned in the back, just like the Lenovo Legion Y530. Hate it or love it. Four rubber feet and the well thought design of the lid make it possible to easily open the laptop using only one hand, like so. It's really easy to do without lifting the whole thing up or moving it around. Always nice to see. The hinges are pretty tight, at least fresh out of the box, but the screen does move around a bit when the laptop is moved or when you game just a little bit too hard. 160 degrees is the maximum when it comes to how far you can push back the lid, at least without breaking it. The lid is made out of plastic, but it doesn't seem to get fingerprint marks that easily. The camera bump section is protruding a little bit at the top and there is a neat hardware switch for the laptop's camera on the right side of the device. The cooling system has its air intake on the bottom of the laptop and the exhaust on both the right and left hand side of the device, as well as on the back. So now let's talk about the connectivity options. There are quite a few ports here, most of them as I've said before located in the back of the device, including the power input. We have three USB-A ports here, one USB-C port which supports both USB-C charging and display output, one 3.5mm combo jack for your microphone and headphones, an Ethernet port, the proprietary Lenovo power connector, and finally the HDMI 2.1 video output. Sadly, there is no display port output here. When it comes to wireless connections, the laptop supports Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. The keyboard here is a standard extended Lenovo chiclet keyboard with a numpad, which is really comfortable to type on, and is, at least for me, more than enough to game on. The keys feel pretty good and everything is in the right place. There really isn't much more to say here. It's a tested and well thought out design. The touchpad is also pretty standard and it supports touch gestures such as alt tabbing by moving two fingers across or zooming in by pinching. Still, it is one of the trackpads which don't feature individual buttons and can only be clicked in on its entire surface, in a single button fashion. Because of this, like other touchpads made like this, it is notoriously hard to press in in its top part and can be easily pressed in by accident on the bottom. While I really like how smooth it feels while it's still brand new and how large it is, I'm not a huge fan of this design choice. Now, I'm going to say it outright. The keyboard lighting is enough for work, but the built-in Lenovo Spectrum customization tool doesn't really give you that many options. It's not something that's really surprising, but don't expect any fireworks or in-depth customization options like you may find, for example, on some of the Alienware or MSI produced laptops. What you get is free custom user modes, which you can switch between using the spacebar function key combo and the possibility to turn the lights off completely. You can also freely change the color of the key lights and assign different colors to free preset keyboard zones. No individual key lighting settings though. You also have access to a few rather underwhelming effects, including a suspiciously choppy wave animation. So now let's turn this thing on. 
Let's skip the Windows 11 configuration and get straight to the desktop. As this model came with an NVMe SSD, the initial boot time with a clean OS install is really fast. As you can see here, the system takes about 14 seconds to boot into a fully interactable desktop, which should be a standard nowadays. By default, the Lenovo Vantage app, which is kind of a quality of life system add-on, will open automatically every time the system boots. This software is a compilation of a few useful tools, including the extended power plan and battery settings, allowing you among other things to stop charging the battery at 80%, enable or disable the fast charging mode, monitor battery health, and access the overnight battery charging mode. Lenovo Vantage also gives you access to performance monitoring tools, and what's really the most important thing for me, to simple power management switches. These allow you to switch between the balanced mode, quiet mode, which prioritizes power saving and low fan speeds, and the performance mode, which lifts the power management restrictions and gives both the CPU and the GPU all the juice they can take during operationally high performance contexts, such as gaming. It's important to note that these switches will override the default Windows power management settings. The power LED on the power button indicates which mode the laptop is currently in. When unplugged, the laptop will always disable the performance mode and lower the display refresh rate to ensure better battery life, which as you will see in a while is pretty average. From here you can also easily select which GPU the system should use. You can choose between only integrated GPU, only dedicated GPU, or let the system decide for you in auto mode. A simple GPU overclock tool is also present. There are also a few other quality of life options here, such as the neat macro key setup tool, a shortcut to the pre-installed sound enhancement software, system hardware scan utility, quick access to system software updates, and the access to keyboard lighting settings we've already talked about. Now the display. And quite honestly, I cannot really say a bad thing about it. While I don't have the appropriate tools to test things like color coverage and whatnot, in my personal experience this is one of the best looking laptop displays I had the pleasure to test recently. The 144Hz refresh rate looks simply amazing in games that can run at that frame rate, and the colors really pop without touching any additional display settings. My cameras definitely don't do this panel justice. Oh, and it's also important to mention that while this particular model has a full HD display, you can also get your Lenovo lock with a 2K front panel if you'd like that. The viewing angles are pretty good too, and the screen has an anti-glare coating. This particular panel can get really bright, but it can also be adjusted to such a low brightness level that even in a dimly lit room its contents can easily become practically invisible. As you can see here. Perfect for late night gaming sessions. Now let's talk about the performance, starting with gaming and finishing with a quick stress test using the Cinebench benchmark. That's where we'll also have a closer look at the max temperatures of both the CPU and the GPU under heavy load. When it comes to practical tests, I've played God of War, Euro Truck Simulator 2, as well as Ultra Kill to test out the general experience of gaming on this laptop. If you'd like to see more examples on this particular model, there are a lot of them all over YouTube, even including running Cyberpunk 2077 on high and ultra settings with very decent performance. I'll link a few of them down below. Eurotrack Simulator and Ultra Kill, being pretty lightweight games, ran really well and looked amazing on the 144Hz display and proved to be a real pleasure to play. No surprises here. God of War also worked great with the graphical settings set to the highest ultra preset, and while the fans got pretty loud during the gameplay in performance mode, the laptop didn't seem to overheat or struggle at any point during my prolonged testing session. Pretty good so far. This is also a perfect occasion to show you what the speakers sound like. The sound is really clear, and it does get pretty loud on the highest loudness setting. This is what it sounds like recorded from my Lumix S5 camera. We broke our bridge. How are we gonna get across? Step aside. In my honest opinion, while there certainly isn't much bass here, these speakers are more than enough for both gaming and watching movies, even when sitting farther away from the laptop. Now comes the time for the quick Cinebench benchmark test. Going through both the single and multi-core CPU test and the quick GPU benchmark, I had a chance to look at the thermals under prolonged heavy load. Before I'll show you the final scores, let me also show you what the max fan speed sounds like, both from up close and from farther away. The single core CPU benchmark yielded a 98 point score, with the CPU package temperature not exceeding 78 degrees Celsius. The multi-core test gave us a score of 675 points, and here the cooling system started to struggle a bit, leading to thermal throttling. During the multi-core stress test, when all the cores were working with 100% load for an extended period of time, the CPU package temperatures reached up to 96 degrees Celsius, which is when the thermal throttling came into play. 
The GPU test, on the other hand, finished with 3801 points and the graphics card's hotspot didn't exceed 66 degrees Celsius during the few minutes of testing. No issues here. Still, remember that this kind of tests, isolating the components and simultaneously placing them under 100% load, are often not representative of real-life scenarios. In most use cases, including casual gaming, you're not really likely to often hit the thermal throttling temperature levels. While this certainly isn't great news, keep in mind that this is going to be an issue with most budget gaming laptops working in high-performance modes under prolonged heavy load. Another practical test I thought would be nice to do was the local AI image generation test using the Stable Diffusion Focus Web UI, which by the way, I have a tutorial for right here on the channel. In the Focus Web UI, generating an image using an SDXL model with the quality preset and the size shown on screen took about 70 seconds, while with the speed preset about 38 seconds total, averaging 1.32 seconds per one iteration. In the extreme speed mode, the generation can take even as little as 10 seconds. These are pretty nice scores considering that this particular version of the Log15 doesn't really feature the most efficient GPU out there. Still, the RTX 3050 with 6GB of VRAM does a very good job here. Now let's quickly talk about battery life. And it's just as you might expect, pretty average. That's just about 2 hours or a little bit more when browsing the internet or watching YouTube videos and much closer to an hour when gaming unplugged. While when browsing the web or doing some light work on the balanced performance mode you can stretch the battery life a bit, still the combination of power-hungry internals and more demanding software or games will most of the time drain the whole battery pretty fast. That's just how it is. So finishing up with all those things in mind, now comes the question. Is the Lenovo Log15 a good choice for gamers and is it still worth getting it? Well, if you're on a budget then I would still say yes. If you have a little bit more money to spare, you can go with the better configuration featuring the RTX 4060, which will be even more powerful. Overall, this is a great laptop both for some casual and more serious gaming and for day-to-day -day work. While some things such as the battery life and keyboard lighting customization could be improved, it is still one of the best budget choices for gamers in this price range and its overall production quality is really surprisingly high for a laptop that can be bought for well under $1000. Once again, you can find the links to all the configurations of the Lenovo Log series in the description below. That's pretty much it. If you liked this review and found it helpful, please do leave a sub, thumbs up or a comment and check out the other videos on my channel. Until next time, bye!